guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Susie and I wanna thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Today's video is going to be a Q&A video. In my last couple of videos, I have asked for you guys to send me your questions in the comments and I would do an entire video answering your questions. So in today's video, we are going to do the month of May and June. I just went back and got all the questions or some of the questions that were asked on my video. And I'm gonna go ahead and answer those for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. any of these answers i did read them of course when i was getting them off youtube um but these questions are going to be pretty much come up with as i answer them um i'm going to start with the may sales video um karen butcher said thank you it's so great to see what sales in your area i just started being in a store how long do you keep an item if it isn't selling so it depends on the item I would say um, sometimes if you just move your item around and set it in a different display, the item will then sell. Um, for instance, I think the cats were in this video. I had had those cats for nearly a year, but I totally believed that they were meant for the right person. So I left them and they did finally sell. So it really just depends on your item. Now I do clean out, of course, by the seasons. If I have something that's specific for a season, I will either pack that up or re-donate it depending on what it is. Um, but yeah, so it just really just depends on the item. Okay, in the same video, Lolita Benita said, very nice items. However, I think your prices are very low on many of your items. Are you taking into account your time spent in sourcing the items, doing the magic on them, the taxes you pay, the materials used, booth rent, and your salary. That's a tough one. So there's really no way to take all that into account. I do always um, try to triple my what I have in it, like what I paid for the product plus the materials that I use on it. I add those up and then I triple it. However, sometimes the item is going to be worth a lot more than that. So I'll look up its worth on uh, eBay solds or something like that and do a little under. Um, a lot of my upcycled items, um, I will just triple the price of them depending on what they are. So that's kind of a tricky question too. I do agree that my prices are too low. And I am slowly trying to move them up. I just like to, if I have a good deal on something, I like to pass that good deal on, but I also do still need to make a profit. But I do agree that I could be making more profit and I need to work on that. Um, Tammy Barrett said, thank you for sharing. I would love to know how your paint and IOD sales are going. Um, those are going great. Um, I sell online. I will sell a lot of IOD online and um, a fairly decent amount at the store and paint sales have only just got started, but I'm also selling that online and in the store. Um, we got to wait till this month is over for me to calculate, you know, really how much profit I did make, but there was not a fusion retailer in my town. And so we're getting a lot of response and people are realizing it now. So we're getting some regular customers at, in the store as well. So I hope that those sales will continue to increase. Um, Lisa Friend says, your words are encouraging. I hope you'll answer one question, please. Where did you get your top? It's so pretty and the color is beautiful on you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, 
Unfortunately, I wish that you guys would have been able to tell me that the sleeve was up the whole time I was filming that video. But to answer your question, I did get that shirt at the store where my booth is. It's called the Copper Cricket. I'll put it up on the screen here if any of you are ever local to the area. The owners, um, they have a an amazing boutique and I probably don't make too much profit because I buy a shirt every time I go in there, it seems like, but they do have some really cute clothes and that's where I got this pink top and I love it. I wear it once a week. Uh, I probably shouldn't because it's a pretty memorable shirt, but I do love the shirt. Okay, now moving on to the video before that, the seed catalog thrift flip video where I use the seed catalog new transfer from IOD. Ellen says, love watching your videos and you are a great teacher. Thank you, Ellen. Um, do you recommend sealing over IOD transfers? Yes, I do recommend sealing them. Um, sometimes I don't. Um, it depends on the item. If it's going to be you know, a picture hanging on the wall. It's not going to be touched very often. It just needs to be lightly dusted occasionally. I might not seal it, but I might put wax on it. Um, if it's going to be an item that's handled or like a table or something like that, I put several coats of a water-based sealer on top of it, like polycrylic or tough coat. Fusion tough coat is a great one or something like that. So yes, I definitely recommend sealing your transfers if it's available. Uh, also, if I put it on a mirror or on glass, I, I don't seal it because that would just mess it up. Um, Sherry said, Susie, I enjoyed watching your video. I can't tell for sure about that color paint, but you made me want to try it. I guess I will be finding me a fusion dealer. Do you sell the paints you use? Yes, uh, back to the one of the previous questions. I do sell fusion paint at my store called the Copper Cricket in Coleman, Alabama, and also on my website, susieonthefarm.com. Okay, for that same video, Nancy Ward says, I collect rolling pins. May I ask where you purchase yours? Your crafts are so cute, by the way. Thank you, Nancy. I get rolling pins at the thrift stores all day long. I never pay more than $3 for them though. You Sometimes, since they're kind of popular now and people are upcycling them, the thrift stores have caught on to that and they'll put eight or $9 on them. I never buy them at that price because I'm always gonna come across them cheaper. Yard sales, whatever. Um, I've never bought them wholesale or on Amazon or anything like that, but I'm sure that you could if you wanted to just do something for yourself and you weren't gonna be reselling them for a profit. Um, okay, now on to the Patriotic Thrift Flip video. That video did not get a lot of views or comments, but I did have one, and it's a good one. Um, Susan Ruppel said, congratulations on your bigger booth. It looks fabulous. Can you tell me the difference between fusion and DIY paints? The main difference with fusion and DIY is DIY is a uh, clay-based paint and it's like chalk paint. It does have to be sealed after being used. Fusion is an all-in-one paint. There is no sealing required. Fusion also has a built-in sealer. Well, it does have a built-in sealer, so you don't have to seal it. And it ha it's self-leveling, um, so the brush strokes are you can't see brush strokes in it. Um, I like DIY paint, but Fusion is absolutely my favorite paint. All the products that I sell, I use on a regular basis and recommend them. So all the IOD, obviously I use, I love, and Fusion, and now the Voice Cycle decoupage paper that I'm using is my favorite. Um, so yeah, that is the difference between Fusion and DIY. Um, I'll link uh, below all the uh, fusion benefits as well, so you guys can read up on that if you're interested in trying those. Okay, um, also in that video, I used a mesh stencil, and I asked the question, how do you guys clean your mesh stencils? Because I had a hard time getting those stars clean, and I got lots of great comments. Um, Gertie said, to clean the mesh stencil, put it in warm water with Dawn dish soap. Probably any dish soap will work. Let it soak for a bit and then use a soft sponge to wipe it clean. Dry the, on a towel, sticky side up. Um, 
that's what I did. That's how I ended up getting it clean. And that does work. It just, I had to do a little bit more elbow grease that I'm used to. I was thinking since I did use a chalk paint that it would just wipe right off that mesh stencil, but it did not. Um, Karen said, just wash the, wash the stencil with water and put it back on the page that it came with to dry. And a lot of people have said that stencils work well with gel paint. Um, you just squeegee it on there. So, and Kelly said you need a paste for mesh stencils and wash it out right away. Squeegee, squeegee the excess paste off. So I'm gonna get me some of that and try next time. Next video that we're gonna answer questions on is, and I don't think there was really any questions, but I also thought that I might put a few negative comments in here and just comment on those, you know, make excuses or whatever, because believe me, I mess up a lot. Um, so the Amish Country thrift, flip, thrift Haul video with mom, where we went to Ohio and went thrifting for two days and antique malls, and we stayed in um, the White Cottage Company cabins or cottages in um, Ohio. Um, Joyce said, your mother kind of ruined your video by chewing her gum while talking and also sticking the gum out of her mouth. I really like watching you, but could not get interested in this one because of the gum chewing being so distracting. Mom said to tell you guys, she is so sorry about that. I didn't even notice it because, you know, I guess I'm around mom all the time and I don't pay attention to the things that she does. So it didn't bother me a bit. Um, if it bothers you guys, she is definitely sorry. She actually um, was trying to quit smoking because uh, we had been in the car for a long time that day and she had not smoked. So she was chewing Nicorette gum. And like I said, I didn't even notice it or I would have asked her to wait about it or let her chew it before we did the video. But anyway, uh, sorry about that. Um, okay, another thrift flip video that I did. Um, Sandy said, hello, Susie. I'm sending this message uh, to let you know that I watch your videos often. I would love to get into selling IOD transfers, molds, and paints. I live in Texas and have a small antique booth, and I was wondering how you got started into it. If you could give me some information, that would be awesome. Sandy, I recommend doing it. I honestly started selling IOD just because I was buying so much of it and I wanted everything and I could not afford to pay full price for everything. So I started selling it wholesale. It was a big investment up front. Um, you have a minimum order. I can't remember what it is, but if you'll go on to the IOD website, they have a... Uh, frequently asked questions on there about becoming a retailer. You'll also need to check your area to see if there is another dealer, you know, in your town because there is a, um, like a territory. Uh, so like I'm the only one close in my area. So that was another reason I went ahead and got into it. I knew if I didn't jump on it, someone would. So I wanted to be uh, exclusive to my area selling this product, but there is, um, a, you have to be, um, I have a wholesale license. So the first thing you'll need to go to do in your state is get you a reseller, like a wholesale license where you can buy things tax-free and at a wholesale price and then sell them. Um, so that's the, um, advice that I have to you on that, but go for it. If it's something you want to do, I have not regretted it. I have been selling IOD for a year now and it has been a joy. Um, Buffy says, after you put the transfers on, can you seal them with anything to protect them? I love the glass jar and also the wooden box. I think this was the video where I did the uh, Desperado transfer and some floral on a wooden box. And yes, I do seal them with a polycrylic or I use Fusion Tough Coat. Um, the glass jar, of course, you couldn't seal. So um, yes, I do recommend sealing them. Kathy Martin says, what's uh, hey Susie, what's the white wax that you use? I use the DIY white wax. It's super buttery and creamy. Um, Fusion does have a white wax, but I have not used that yet. So in most of my videos, if you see me using a white wax, it is either the DIY white wax or the Waverly white wax that you get at Walmart. Um, I will say the DIY is much drier and like I said, buttery smooth, goes on better. Um, but sometimes the Waverly uh, is nice too. It's much wetter 
it'll get down in cracks and stuff, but you do have to be careful with it because it will reactivate your paint. And it also is a more of a um, off-white yellowy color when it dries. Um, Figaro, oh, here's another negative comment. Figaro Hay says, what do you do with painted wooden spoons with random words stamped on them? You can't stir with them, so what's the point? Do they sit in your home collecting dust? I don't understand. So, yes, they sit in my home collecting dust, but that's what all decor does, right? But that's what we love. We want our houses to look a certain way, so we do that, and that's perfectly fine. And if you don't understand, that's perfectly fine too, but that is why I do it, just to look pretty and collect dust. Um, Amy Parker says, I'm local to you and I'm enjoying your videos. Now I'm curious where you're moving to. So I moved to the Copper Cricket in Coleman, Alabama. Um, the address I believe is 403 4th Avenue Southwest. Um, it is on my Facebook page. I will link that and I will also link the Copper Cricket's Facebook page. They post pictures every day of all the items in the booth or in the store. There's several booths. Um, it's a pretty big store. The main thing they're going to have there is antiques, painted furniture, um, upcycled items. We've got the IOD, we've got the fusion paint, and tons of boutique clothing, and I love it. Um, okay, I think the last video that I'm going to answer questions on today, nope, we have two more. We have three more, sorry. Okay, so, um, April Booth Sales. Uh, Susie, what is the name of the wholesale company you buy your florals from? I get this question a lot. I get my wholesale florals. I have two places. My favorite is Audrey's um, Your Heart's Delight. You do have to be a wholesaler to get them. I mean, I think you can purchase them at retail, but it is pretty expensive to do that. Um, their florals are very upscale and um, really make your projects look really nice. Or if you're just buying them for your home, I would absolutely recommend their florals. They're gorgeous. Um, um, if you want a cheaper version and probably not as many to choose from, but I do order some things from Cole House Designs also. I will link those both in the description box below, uh, but that's where I get my wholesale florals from. And, okay, Sandra says, beautiful round table. I really love it. Yes, could you please sell the wholesale store where the where you buy the floral? Same question. Sorry, I should have uh, said both of those. Okay, on to the Hoosier cabinet video. Um, in that video, I went to my husband's grandparents' house, and um, we got that Hoosier cabinet out, and I redid it. Kim, Resnick, and... Uh, my three sons said the Hoosier cabinet, well, both their comments were general. Kim said, the Hoosier cabinet is absolutely adorable. I love the transfers you added. Would love to see a full pick with those on the piece. And on another note, in the video, I caught a bit of an old bed mattress with rusty springs. I hope you're going to salvage those as well. And then my three sons says, don't forget to get the bed springs. I don't know what you do with rusty bed springs. I'll have to watch a few videos of those, but now that I've had a few comments saying that, I will definitely do that. And I do plan to get everything out of there that I can possibly salvage. I don't like to go this time of year because snakes and critters and stuff, I'd rather go in the fall or the late winter um, to get stuff out. So yes, I will definitely be doing that. And then, Kelly Hull said, I think your transformation is beautiful and what a treasure. I think I personally would have cleaned it, then sealed it as is. It had the perfect chippy paint. I agree, Kelly. It did have perfect chippy paint, but no matter how much I cleaned it, I could not get the grungy look off of it, just the dirty, dirty look, and I did not want that. So I ended up painting it white and then tried to heavily distress it to bring a lot of that chippiness back. Um, for the last video questions, I have the neutral thrift flips. And Dixie says, judging by the time on the clock, it's apparent, apparent that you spend a lot of time on your projects. Um, I think the clock said it was probably about 1030 or 11. Rest assured, my tail was not up that late working. 
I can make it till about nine o'clock. I get home from my regular nine to five job, probably about 5.30 most days. And by the time I cook supper or my husband cooks supper and we eat and clean the kitchen and I get down here, it's at least seven o'clock by the time I start working and I can't make it past nine o'clock. I have to get plenty of sleep or I am not worth anything. I work a lot. Um, I'm busy all the time, but I have a bedtime and it is usually no later than nine o'clock. My husband says it's 8.30. But a lot of times I'll go to the bed at 8.30 and lay there and watch a YouTube video or something like that. So, yeah, I was not up working that late. Uh, most of the work I get done is on Saturdays if we don't have anything to do. Okay. Joe Ellen said, have you ever heard of Pirate Ship? I hear they have some good shipping rates. I have not heard of them. I use Squarespace to make my website, and they have a pretty easy shipping um you know, where I can buy labels and stuff on there. And so I've actually really enjoyed using it. I don't know how, but it seems to be cheaper than just taking my packages to the post office, even though I'm still using the post office. So I don't know if they get some kind of discount or what it is, but I really, really like Squarespace shipping options. All you gotta do is, you know, put the size of your box in there, how much it weighs, and um, where it's go it'll know where it's going and it'll tell you how much and then you can probably buy your label right there on the Squarespace and then I give them to my postman that comes to the office every day most of the time. So it works out really great for me. Um, Nana, Nana Kelly says, do you still have the ducks? How much? I believe I do still have both of those ducks from the neutral thrift flip video. And they are on the website, and I'll put the link to them in the comments below. So that is all my questions. I hope that y'all have enjoyed my first uh, Q&A video. I might do one like every quarter or every couple of months, um, just, you know, answering like I've done today, if this is something that you guys are interested in. And I won't put them on Wednesday. I'll make sure I keep my thrift flips or whatever's going on that week on the Wednesday slot, and I'm thinking I might do these on Sundays. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, video where it's just me here talking to you, and I'll see you again next week.